Good Thursday morning, everybody. This is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Uh, watching the weather closely today, though, not much going on today. I anticipate mostly sunny skies and temperatures up near 90 degrees. Quick look at the radar and satellite together. We'll throw the temperatures up there. We're in the mid-70s already here in North Carolina and South Carolina. Back to the west, though, you see this big mess over the middle of the country. Uh, this is a pretty interesting setup going into our Friday. We've got a big, what we call an MCS down here in Texas. Uh, that's called a mesoscale convective system. It's just a big cluster of thunderstorms. Also, pretty good area of showers and thunderstorms up here. But as you go into Texas, a couple things you notice, big time gravity waves. These are wave clouds that were generated by this big old uh, MCS over North Texas. These are propagating down towards Old Mexico. Uh, just kind of an interesting feature. Then he moved down into Alabama, areas of Mississippi, uh, into North Georgia, area of low clouds here, but a good cluster of showers and thunderstorms in middle Mississippi into middle Alabama, causing uh, some heavy rain this morning. Actually, a couple flash flood warnings in effect for these areas. What I'm watching is tomorrow as this system kind of comes together and then pushes to the east, we're going to see the threat for some severe weather here in North Carolina. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already put out a slight risk for all of North and South Carolina. I showed you that yesterday, but when you look at the probabilities a little bit closer, you can see this area of 15% as well as 30% probability of severe weather. This is just severe weather. This is any in particular uh, type of severe weather. You see the legend down here at the bottom. Um, I anticipate a big old squall line forming, and if we're going to see some severe weather as far as tornadic threat, it's likely going to be up in here closer to where the low and the warm and cold front come together, the triple point down here in North Carolina and South Carolina. We're looking at more of a squall line type of setup. When we look at the model data, this is our future cast. Uh, you'll see this thing start to come together here. Uh, as it develops tonight and tomorrow. Slight risk of severe storms today just to our west along this line, but watch what happens overnight. Things kind of fall apart. Then during the day tomorrow, and this is a key part, how much of the afternoon heating are we going to get here across North and South Carolina? If there's some low clouds or rain, that may really reduce our severe weather chances, but you can see this line of storms forming right there. That's what I'm watching for the afternoon. We'll put this into motion, and you can see what happens by the afternoon hours. This is actually tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours, right around 8 o'clock. Look at this nasty squall line forming along the cold front. The lows back here it becomes negatively tilted, which means the low is tilting back to the west, which means this area right in here, this is an area I would watch for tornadoes tomorrow. Northern Virginia, the Delmarva, uh, Maryland, southern New Jersey. Uh, parts of uh, as well as the southern parts of uh, Pennsylvania. But further south where we are, this looks like it's going to be more of just a squall line and a big straight line wind threat. Though you can never rule out a tornado, uh, the chances are pretty small right now. I put it at a one on my scale from zero to ten as we go through the day tomorrow. So let's take a little closer at some of the data here as we go into tomorrow. We'll turn off the current information and start plotting some model data for you here as we go through the day tomorrow. The first model we're going to look at is a short range model. This is just into the afternoon hours. You can see the showers trying to develop to our west and also the short range model is trying to develop some afternoon and evening storms. I certainly think this is a possibility by tonight but not a really big deal. The one model I want to focus on is the one we call the HRW and this is going to go into tomorrow morning. We'll start tomorrow morning. This is a future radar at 8 a.m. So this will plot here. 8 a.m., you see everything kind of dies down, but watch what happens as we go into the afternoon hours. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Notice our squall line beginning to come together here uh, across Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, a couple isolated cells out ahead of it. This will be interesting to watch. I don't think this will happen right now. We just don't have the shear uh, to get these isolated supercells, we call them. But as we go into the afternoon, this thing kind of coalesces into a line. And one thing you notice on this model is that you're getting some bowing segments in here. It looks like some little bows are developing, maybe a little uh, QLCS, we call it, quasi-linear convective system, which is just a squiggly line, which means you could get some little spin-ups in these notches, but more likely it's straight line winds. And again, the area for tornadic activity is going to be right up in here that we'll watch tomorrow. When you try to throw uh, some of the shear on there, this is a look at the shear tomorrow. You can see how it's really enhanced up here uh, in areas of southern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, the Washington DC area. Down here they're sheer but it's not as intense as it is up to the north. Uh, Cape or what we call thunderstorm fuel. You can see we've got plenty of it right along the front. I'll actually back this up a little bit. Uh, we'll go back a little bit. You can see along the front pretty good 
instability, but notice this little cluster up here near the DC area. That's an area I would watch for possible tornadic development up in these areas, up here in Virginia, as well as areas of Maryland into the Delmarva and obviously southern parts of Pennsylvania. But for, for North Carolina, I think we're looking at more of a squall line type setup. In fact, we'll look at another model run here uh, showing reflectivity. And this is the, uh, the NAM4. I only have this out the 36 hours, so this goes to tomorrow afternoon. Notice it has the squall line developing back towards the west here, right in here. But watch, look at that little thing. See, this is an area, these little supercells, if they're going to develop tomorrow, they're going to be right in here. So this is an area I would watch very carefully tomorrow afternoon. And that's definitely an area I'm watching. In fact, if we look at some of the other model data, we'll look at the NAM model. Uh, this is something we call the Energy Helicity Index. This is kind of one of those composite indices. Uh, that kind of throws in the amount of helicity and, and cape you have. And look at the big clustering going on up here across the, uh, the D.C. area into the Delmarva Peninsula. And then you look at uh, STP, what people are familiar with, that significant tornado parameter. Uh, you look at that as well. This is for tomorrow afternoon into the evening. And you can see the same thing, STP. There's a little bit down here in North Carolina, but it's only less than one. But up here in southern Pennsylvania, the D.C. area, Delmarva, you're getting between the twos and threes up there. So that's an area clearly tomorrow that we'll be watching carefully right up in here. But for North Carolina, South Carolina, I think our main threat is starting to look more and more like a big squall line that's going to move across the area. So we'll throw back the current conditions out there this morning. Uh, basically, we're watching the system to the west. Just be on guard for severe weather as we go into your Friday. Tornado threat is not zero, but it's, it's pretty minimal. The main threat tomorrow is going to be straight line winds and the possibility of some flash flooding because some areas have seen a lot of rain in the last couple of weeks. And if these storms do move slow, we could see some flooding. The timing right now is late Friday afternoon, really into the evening hours. We're talking about Friday evening right now. If you start looking at the timing of all this, of course, I'll keep an eye on it online at WCNC.com on my blog, on my Twitter feed, WX Brad, any watches, warnings, and any updates, and on Facebook. And of course, on air starting today at 4, 5, 6, and 11 on News Channel 36. I'll see you then.